what an interesting topic name and presentation classification and scoring hello friends once again we meet on youtube to discuss some interesting findings my name is paresh naik and i am an ent surgeon we are going to do an express ct learning or shall we call radio espresso with the advent of the telemedicine i was asked to give a second opinion for this gentleman who had nose block this international patient who was referred by one of my colleagues the moment i saw this ct scan my mind was i should share with you all so before we start learning please do not forget to hit the subscribe button like and share with your colleagues so my question to you all which is the best view to see the ct paranasal sinus and that's correct you're right it's a coronal scan okay so now going to the coronal scan we all know black is air white is bone and anything in between can be soft tissue fluid but not air and bone so as we go anterior to posterior that is from front to back what we can see the first bony structure that is a white structure is the anterior wall of the frontal sinus along with the nasal bone remember this scan is really interesting and it actually has lot of anatomical variations this is the interfrontal sinus septum but that is not what i want to show you here's what i want to show you at the first look of it what do you see these structures this is not a fine ct scan but that's okay this scan shows important findings that we need for basic endoscopic sinus surgery remember it's no more functional endoscopic sinus surgery we need to get used to the term s rather than fes so this cell and this structure can you see this thin white bony line it's a anterior most cell that's a clue this is an agar nasi cell so what is an agar nasi cell it is the anterior most ethmoidal cell the ethmoidal cell started walking went all the way in front and decided to sit over there that's our cell this is the area of frontal beak and this marks the demarcation of uh, type 3 and type 2 frontal cells the frontal cells are classified as per the coons classification that's the coons classification for you take a screenshot keep that as your wallpaper remember it so what is a coons classification coons classification is type 1 is a single cell which is present above the agar nasi so if there was a cell just over here that would have been a type 1 cell if there would have been a multiple cells over here just above agar nasi that would have been type 2 type 3 is a large pneumatization from the frontal recess into the frontal sinus so from the frontal recess into the frontal sinus so this will become a type 3 cell so to remember type 3 cell a part of its lower body considering this is the upper body and lower body is sitting on the frontal recess let's have a look from the different angle so this is the sagittal section which is actually very important when we are doing frontal and sphenoid surgeries this is the skull base now this is the frontal beak and low to that will be your agar nasi cell the frontal recess will be over here and can you see this cell is the same cell that we saw over there and this is a large type 3 coon cell so what is the significance of this frontal cell the frontal cell it can occlude the frontal recess and can give rise to frontal sinusitis can be isolated or unilateral 
The literature says that frontal cells have been reported around 20 to 41 percent in the sinuses, but this is definitely underreported. You know, because not all people, not everyone, has undergone a CT scan. Only people who are symptomatic they have undergone. That doesn't mean that others don't have it. So beware of this cell, and a CT scan is essential for endoscopic sinus surgery. One thing I would like to show you, uh, the thing is, very interesting finding. I'm going to skip a couple of sections and the reason I'm going to show you is at this particular point. As I said, these are not fine cuts, so a couple of sections will be missing. Can you see over here? This is just about a semi, a very small supraorbital cell. What is happening over here? We need to see that when we have this kind of cell over here, the anterior ethmoidal artery opens in the cell and we have to be very careful while clearing this structure. If we are using a micro debrider or even 45 degrees Blakesley, there's a high chance we may just injure the anterior ethmoidal. And we need to be careful about this. Now moving on to the next finding that I would like to show you, as you would have already understood when, when I was scrolling the scan, that it's not this deviated septum. What I want to show you is this over here. They have bilateral Hellar cells. <clears throat> so what is a Hellar cell? Hellar cell is uh, an again ethmoidal cell which has migrated laterally gone on the roof of the maxillary sinus. This is the maxillary sinus, it has gone on the roof. Enter ethmoidal, gone laterally and situated over the, here. So if this increases, you can but obvious understand what can happen. It can occlude the osteomatal complex and cause, again, effects of sinusitis. Now, the reason why I'm saying that this is a really interesting scan is there are so many anatomical variations which can actually occlude the sinuses. This is the again one important finding. L a massive deviated nasal septum with a large spur, spur that is impinging on the inferior turbinate. This has caused a lot of crowding over here. So imagine there is a crowding of structures over here also moving couple of scans sections behind there's a hellar cell so but obvious the osteomatal complex will get blocked that was on the left side look at on the right side okay there is no deviation but what has happened there was enough space and the inferior turbinate has grown up so there is unilateral enlargement of the inferior turbinate also the middle turbinate has got an air cell there's a concha and Hellar cell. This overcrowding because of Hellar cell and a concha can again cause sinusitis. This patient will be symptomatic on both the sides and will have on and off sinusitis mainly because of the anatomical blockage. On the left side, as mentioned, the spur, the Hellar cell, overcrowding, everything is causing blockage of the osteomatal complex. Also, the as seen, the frontal cell may be causing blockage of the frontal recess. On the right side, again, the prominent Hellar cell, the concha, will also cause osteomatal blockage. This patient will definitely have bilateral nose block and features of sinusitis. And again, although on the CT scan it shows mild to moderate severity but the patient can have severe symptoms as you can see again on the left side because of the deviated septum and this large bony spur and many times this large bony spur will require drilling or using mallet and gouge to remove also not only we have to be careful while doing the middle metal antrostomy we should ensure that the halal cell is removed very well and the lower border of the halal cell is removed. 
The radiological features can be scored using London Mackay scoring system. It depends on how the sinuses are and also it accounts for the osteomyital complex involvement. So having a quick look at the scan again, if we start visualizing from the frontal sinus going posteriorly, we have seen the agar nasi and also the frontal cells. Here comes the helar cell. Now comes the deviated septum and the concha going all the way behind into the posterior thymoids and now the spinoid. Let's have a look at the scoring system. We are on the redcalculators.org and we are checking the London Mackay system, the scoring system. So let's start putting the values in. So zero is normal, partial opacification is one and total is two. Looking at the maxillary sinus, as we could remember, uh, let's put partial opacification for both the maxillary sinuses. The anterior ethmoidals on the right side was partially opacified. I would say it was comp total opacification on the left side. Beg your pardon. And moving to the posterior ethmoids, putting partial opacification on either side. Spinoid sinus, partial opacification. Frontal sinus, again, partial opacification. And the osteomatal complex, definitely it was completely occluded. And the moment we do that, that's the score, 15. This scoring system is very essential. Just to put you through the scoring system of the sinuses, 0 is normal, 1 is partial, 2 is complete opacification. We do get osteomatal complex in the account. And definitely if it's obstructed, we should address the osteum. So my question to you all, for this patient, if you want to do the surgery, what kind of surgical procedure are you going to do? What all will it involve? Will you like to address the frontal sinus, number one? Will you correct the septum? And that will be an obvious answer, yes. How will you address the maxillary sinus, anterior thymoids, posterior thymoids, and will you address the spinoid? Drop down your answers in the comment section. One more important thing, will you correct the inferior turbulent? Thank you for listening. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and see you next time.